You probably feel like you know the derivative. It's one of the first things we all learn in calculus. But what if I told you there's another way to define it? A way that looks completely circular and paradoxical at first, but, well, it ends up being able to rebuild a huge chunk of calculus from the ground up. Today, we're going to look at one of the oldest ideas in math through a brand new lens. So, here's our plan. We're going to start with a little puzzle that seems to fly in the face of logic. Then, we'll unlock what it really means and see how it's not a paradox at all. From there, the fun begins. We'll use it to derive some core theorems, walk through a classic product rule example step by step, and finish by exploring what this new perspective tells us about the very foundations of calculus. All right, let's get right to it. We're going to look at two definitions of the derivative. The first one is going to look very familiar, like an old friend. The second one, well, the second one is probably going to make you scratch your head. Okay, on the left, we have the classic. The definition of the derivative, f prime of x, is the limit as h approaches 0 of the fraction f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. It's the slope of the tangent line. We all know it. We all love it. But now, look at the right. This new definition says that f prime of x is the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over h times the integral from x to x plus h of f prime of t dt. Wait a minute. How can we define the derivative, f prime, using an integral of f prime itself? That feels like defining a word by using the word in its own definition. It seems totally circular. So what's going on here? How do we solve this little paradox? Well, it turns out this definition isn't circular at all. And the key to unlocking it, to proving it's legit, comes from maybe the most important, most powerful theorem in all of calculus. That's right, it's the fundamental theorem of calculus. It's the beautiful idea that tells us integrating a rate of change gives us the total net change. And specifically for our purposes, it tells us that the integral of a derivative, f prime of t, from some point x to another point x plus h, is exactly equal to the original function evaluated at the endpoints, f of x plus h minus f of x. This theorem is the bridge that connects our two definitions. Okay, so just watch this. It's really neat. Let's take that integral part in our new weird definition, the integral from x to x plus h of f prime of t dt. Thanks to the fundamental theorem, we know that a whole thing is just f of x plus h minus f of x. So let's swap it out. When we do that, our new definition becomes the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over h times the quantity f of x plus h minus f of x. And what do you know? That is literally the standard definition of the derivative. So the big takeaway here is, they're identical. Our new definition wasn't circular at all. It was just a perfectly valid, different way of saying the exact same thing. So it's valid, great, but so what? Is it actually good for anything, or is it just a bit of mathematical trivia? Let's find out. Let's see what we can build with this new tool. We're going to try to derive one of the most important theorems in calculus, the mean value theorem, starting only from our new integral average definition. What's so cool about our new definition is that it frames the derivative as an average value of the derivative itself over a tiny interval. And there's another theorem, the mean value theorem for integrals, that says the average value of any continuous function over an interval has to be equal to the function's actual value at some point in that interval. At the same time, we know that this average is also just the good old rise over run slope. So when you put those two facts together, that this average equals both of these things, the mean value theorem for derivatives just appears. It falls right out of the logic, almost effortlessly. Okay, that was pretty slick, but it was also a bit abstract. Let's get our hands dirty and see how this new perspective works on a concrete problem. We're going to calculate a derivative using the product rule, but we're going to do it entirely from the perspective of our new integral definition, just like a mathematician would. All right, here's our mission. Find the derivative of the function f of x equals x squared times e to the x. But we're not going to use the standard product rule you memorized. Nope. We're going to use its equivalent form derived from our new definition. This says the derivative is the limit of 1 over h times the sum of two integrals. The integral of u prime v plus the integral of u v prime. So our job is to calculate those two integrals. Okay, first up is that first integral, which is for the u prime v term. For us, that's the integral from x to x plus h of 2t times e to the t. To solve this, we use the standard technique of integration by parts, and after a little bit of work, we get the expression you see on the screen. Now, for the second piece of the puzzle. We need to calculate the integral for the u v prime term. In this case, that's the integral of t squared times e to the t. 
And again, Integration by Parts is the perfect tool for the job. You work it through, and it gives you this result here. All right, here comes the fun part, the algebra. We have to add the results of those two integrals together. And I know, it looks like an absolute mess at first, but you have to trust the process. When you carefully group the terms with e to the x plus h and the terms with e to the x and just simplify everything down, a whole lot of stuff cancels out, and you're left with this much, much cleaner expression. It's really quite satisfying. So now we have to take the limit of our combined expression, all divided by h. And the problem is we have that pesky h in the denominator. So how do we handle this? Well, we use a really beautiful and powerful trick, the Taylor series expansion. We can replace e to the h with its infinite polynomial series, which starts with 1 plus h plus h squared over 2 factorial, and so on. This turns the tricky exponential term into something we can do algebra with. So we substitute that series in, we multiply everything out, and then we divide the entire expression by h. And this is where the magic happens. As we finally let h go to zero, every single term that still has an h in it just vanishes. They all go to zero. And what are we left with? We're left with e to the x times the quantity x squared plus 2x. And if you check, that is exactly the answer you get from the standard product rule. It works. It's a lot more work, but it works perfectly. So this new definition is clearly more than just a party trick, right? It's not just some complicated way to get the same answer. It's a robust alternative starting point. You could almost think of it as a new foundation from which we can build some of the other major ideas in calculus. And this is where it gets truly mind-blowing. If we take that averaged form of the product rule we just used, and we essentially reverse the process, we integrate both sides, we do some careful manipulation, we can actually derive the entire formula for integration by parts. It's not some separate rule you have to memorize. It's a direct consequence that emerges from this same foundational idea. But it gets even deeper. And honestly, it gets a little bit weird. Because our definition expresses f prime using an integral of f prime, what's to stop us from substituting the definition back into itself? and then doing it again, and again, and again. When you do this, you uncover this wild, infinite recursive structure that's hidden deep inside the concept of a derivative. Look at this. This equation shows exactly what I mean. The derivative, f prime, is the infinitesimal average of itself. But that itself inside the integral can also be replaced by its own definition, which is an average of an average. And you can do this forever. It creates this beautiful, almost fractal-like structure of nested averages, an infinite chain that somehow still collapses down to one single, well-defined value. It's amazing. So let's wrap this all up. The big idea is that thinking of the derivative as an infinitesimal average of itself isn't just a quirky thought experiment. It's a powerful, foundational principle. From this one single elegant idea, we can derive the mean value theorem, we can find a new path to the product rule, and even integration by parts. And we uncover this profound, recursive nature at the very heart of calculus. You know, this whole journey leaves us with a really exciting question. It proves that even in a subject as old and as well-explored as calculus, a simple shift in perspective can reveal brand new connections and incredibly deep structures we never saw before. 